Hi and welcome to the channel. Swiss made fully functional Rolex GMT homage for $169. What's the catch? Well, the parcel just came from German shop. Let's open it up and find out. Hi and welcome to the channel. If you're already subscribed, thank you and very warm welcome back. And if you're new here, please make sure to hit the subscribe button, it does help us to bring you more reviews. In this unboxing video, sticking to my usual format, I will share dimensions and specifications of this watch. And then at the end, I will list things that I liked about this watch and of course things that I didn't particularly like as much. So without any further ado, let's get into it. Up until recently, I was convinced that to find a brand new homage, to Rolex GMT with magic words Swiss made on the dial, I would need to spend around $600 to $700. Brands like Steinhardt, Squally and Christopher Ward, which is actually a bit more expensive, come to mind. So I have to be honest, I was quite surprised when I came across this item on Joma Shop. It was priced at $269, which appeared to be pretty good price for the spec. And when Joma Shop ran a special of $100 off, I actually had to double check because $169 is a pretty sharp price, even by AliExpress standards. Yes, AliExpress. For example, a three-hander quartz from AliExpress for Saint Martin with Swiss Ronde movement will cost you more than $200. So at $169 price tag, I had to check this watch out. So I pulled the trigger and now it is here. Of course, the shipment is free if you are in the United States. I am based in UK though, so I went for DHL standard tracking shipment. And the whole order came to $195. I haven't received the customs charge yet, but from experience, DHL are quite pedantic about it. So anytime now, I should get a note for around $35 or so. So all in all, this watch will cost me, give or take, $230 which is still cheaper than the listed price of 269 which was already, as I mentioned, a pretty good price. As you can see, there are a few color combinations on offer. You've got root beer, you've got black and green, you've got Batman or Batgirl and others. I already have two black and blue ones, so this time I decided to go for Pepsi. A quick disclaimer, I did buy this watch with my own money and I didn't get any special deal from Joma Shop. The $100 discount is available at the moment to everyone. I am, however, an affiliate of Joma Shop and it is the same as with any other affiliate links. If you purchase the watch after following the link in the description, I might get a small commission. However, it will not cost you anything extra. Joma Shop is, of course, a so-called grey market retailer, which means they take care of the warranty process. Their prices are usually among the best in business, so check them out. Even if you don't buy from them, you can always use their prices as a reference point. Naturally, I wanted to know more about my 30 so company. Well, to start with, I actually had some questions about the watch and their customer service came back very quickly and were quite helpful in their answer, which is always a good sign. They have a number of Rolex homages with quartz and automatic movements and of course Martha Etiso designed unique timepieces as well. I will leave a link in the description if you're interested to learn a bit more about the brand and their watch collections. Martha Etiso is an independent manufacturer and has been going since 1886 and by the way has nothing to do with the brand Tiso which is a part of Swatch Group. During various military campaigns the company fulfilled orders for British and US military. Also, in 1969 and in 1970, it produced custom watches for Elvis Presley and his family. So, this brand does have some provenance and pedigree and, of course, an experience and know-how on how to run a high-quality watchmaking business. Back to this watch, it comes in the quite attractive box, not over the top, but kind of fit for purpose. Also, I will keep the wrappings on this watch for this video because one of my friends saw it and liked the watch and the price so much that he asked me if he can buy it from me. So I had to order another one from Joma Shop, which I will use in the full review. This watch is listed at 42mm diameter with 20mm lugs. Let's check this out. Yep, bang on, 42mm. Lug width, 20mm. The height of the watch is just under 11.5mm, quite slender thanks to the Ronda quartz movement. Lug tip to lug tip is 50mm and because the end links are slightly recessed, 
if we measure the end link to end link distance, it is just under 49 millimeters. The end link distance plays a big part on how watch looks on the wrist. That's why a large watch with a short end link distance can appear small on the wrist, like some big Seiko divers, for example, and vice versa, a smaller watch like Rolex Explorer, for example, at 39 millimeters can command a larger presence on the wrist because of the protruding end links. The weight is 140 grams on the supplied stainless steel bracelet. The bracelet tapers down to about 18 millimeters towards the clasp and the clasp is about 20 millimeters wide. The bracelet at full length should cover just under eight and a quarter inch wrist or 21 centimeter in circumference. Here is the watch on my about seven inch wrist. If we look at the dial, I think the dial is done quite well. Piano black finish, a minute chaptering and limbed field applied indices. Everything aligns, you can clearly see a hallmark of a good quality control in action. A familiar set of hands, Mercedes our hand, lollipop second hand and the red colored Lum GNT hand. Crisp date window cut out at 3 o'clock and of course Swiss made wooding at 6 o'clock. I'm not too concerned that the second hand doesn't hit minute markers bang on. I personally think in this price segment this is not particularly relevant. Of course, if this was a Grand Seiko Quartz for $5,000, my reaction would be quite different. Loom is not bad, however it looks like it is stronger on indices than it is on hands. I would of course prefer it to be the same, or at very least other way around. Well. Crystal is what I actually had to reach out to Mathieu Tissot to clarify for me. Some of their watches are listed as sapphire crystal and some, including this watch, are sapphire coated. So the sapphire coated is actually exactly what it says. A thin layer of sapphire coating over a mineral glass. This of course allows for cost saving, however, still delivers better than mineral glass scratch resistance. And as a bonus, less chances of the glass shattering because full sapphire have stronger propensity to shatter on impact compared to mineral glass. We also have a cyclope, wouldn't say the magnification is two and a half times, however, I think it's okay and seems sufficient. Moving on to the case, full stainless steel construction, very good finishing all around, there is no sharp edges or any questionable surfaces all around well finished case. Very good and consistent mirror polish on the sides of the case. I like the quality of satin brushing on top of the case and the end links. There is also a screw on back case and it is well finished. The case is slim and due to a nice subtle curvature of the lugs sits quite well on the wrist. The case features a screwed on crown and together with the screwed on back case we have a declared 100 meters of water resistance. So you can take this watch for a swim. This watch has 120 click unidirectional bezel with aluminium insert. The alignment is spot on, which is nice. I like the satin finishing on the bezel insert. It has a look of quality finish and in the same time gives that vintage classic look of Rolex GMT Pepsi with aluminium bezel. Now a quick word on the bezel action. There is a bit of a play. This is not tool diver bezel and taking into account the price point, for me it is on the border of acceptable. Of course, it would be better if it wasn't there. Another thing that I found a bit strange is the resistance of the bezel versus the grip on the bezel. As it comes out of the box, the bezel is a bit on the stiff side. However, the grip, even though it looks grippy on the pictures, in reality the edges of the bezel and the teeth are well polished, which is nice, but at the same time makes them quite slippery. So turning the bezel, especially when the watch just comes out from the box, is a bit of a weird experience. All that said, if this was a diver bezel, I would be concerned. However, for a GMT watch where the bezel used only occasionally to set the third time zone, I think this bezel action is okay. Based on Matthew Tissot's website, this watch is powered by Ronda 515H24 movement. This is quite an accurate Swiss quartz movement with GMT complication. It has an accuracy of minus 10 plus 20 seconds per month and a battery life of over three and a half years. Crown action is smooth and straightforward. The bracelet is okay, solid links and solid end links, nice satin brushed outer links and mirror polished center links, as well as sides of the bracelet. Also, we have a machined scissor clasp, even though the outer shoulder clasp is pressed, I think at this price point it is more than sufficient. The push pins are used rather than screws, which is fine. Also, the links are small enough to give enough adjustment room for comfortable fit. There are also four micro adjustments on the clasp. 
which is good. There are maybe a bit more flex on the Jubilee style bracelet than I would like, however, it feels well machined and of a good quality. And now we come to the section where I talk about what I particularly like and dislike about this watch. Well, there is one part that doesn't fall into neither of those categories in my opinion, and that is 1886 engraved on the side of the case. Personally, I don't mind. However, I do appreciate this could be not everyone's cup of tea. So, positives and negatives. Let's do the positives first this time. First and foremost, quality control. QC is really good. Everything aligns, good finishing all around, Everything fits together nicely and good attention to details. I also like slightly recessed end links that allows for comfortable fit on the wrist. And another positive in my opinion is a good color of the bezel. Actually, I quite like the overall vintage look of the dial and bezel together. And last but definitely not least is the price. For $169 US, I think this is a very good deal. And now we come to negatives, and some of it might come across as a bit of a nitpicking, but let's go over them nevertheless. First, end links. One piece, but two different polished surfaces. I would rather have a five piece for the end link, not a deal breaker, but I think it just would look cleaner. Bezel action is a bit too tight. I have to admit it is getting better with use, so I will have to give you guys an update later in the later reviews. Again, a bit of a nitpicking, the GMT hand. Personally, I would like it to be just ever so slightly longer. And, of course, Lumen hands. Lumen indices is very good. However, Lumen hands lasts less than on indices, which kind of defeats the purpose. So, let us know in the comments below if you already have one of these or any other timepieces from Matthew Tissot, and what is your experience with them. And as always, Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.